Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are doing a bit of a PC tutorial for a program called Hearthstone Deck Tracker, which is this program here. It starts off looking more like this, though, because you don't have a deck involved. So first thing you need to do is, let's see. Where's my notepad? Here it is. Go to this address, https github.com, epic37 hearthstone dex tracker shall release, and download the zip file. And then you need to enable a detailed logging for Hearthstone, the game, which you can get to. What you have to do is get to your app data. So C users if you're using if it's on your C drive your username whatever your username is don't just type in your user app data local blizzard hearthstone or you can just try percentage sign capital local app data percentage slash blizzard slash hearthstone and he believes the creator does on the Mac you need to get to tilde library application support blizzard and hearthstone this is all application space support and in that folder you're going to create a new text file just let's see make a new text file and right click new text file in windows and call it log.config with no extension at the end no dot txt so log dot config and then you put inside of it just bracket zone log level equals one file printing equals false cons console printing equals true screen printing equals false and that information is all you need in that file then you just close it and save it and at that point you restart hearthstone and when you get to hearthstone and get to a game you will notice something very great and very good so let's go into a game and well I'm not going to show you a lot really because I deleted the, the deck but I'll show you what it is just by default and I'll show you what it's supposed to be normal normally <laughs> I'm getting a little frustrated with this attempt at recording so you see now there's an overlay I've set it up at least to hide unless you're in the game. And this overlay is going to collect a lot of data for you and help you become a better hostile player. So what it does by default is it's going to add a list here of all your cards. And when it sees cards, it's going to add those to your deck. Uh, normally, by, you will have your entire deck already saved and it I will eliminate ready. cards as you play them. Notice that it can read the log file a lot faster than the animation. So just by looking at it, I knew I was going to get Elven Arrow a lot faster. So there's the percentage numbers here. I'm not sure what they do. I'm so new to it. By default, there's three timers here, kind of like chess timers. How long they took, how long I took, and the game so far. There are some numbers here. And what it is, is each number is the card, the turn that that card was drawn. And so the K here means he keep, kept the card and didn't trade it out on the, his very first zero. Turn. The S here means that he got the... Um, card by some special summoning and it's even telling me it's clockwork gnome because it we saw how there, or maybe we didn't see that's it maybe not it's a actually, valid target uh, maybe it's telling us more information than before now I think Clockwork Gnome, Death Rattle, Elder Spare Part to your hand. S is for spare part, I bet. Or maybe Special Summon, who knows. 
the software is so new. Give it a shot. This section here is the Job cards your opponent's deck. Move quickly. You're not going to always know what your opponent's deck are, but you can see what they played before, and you can hover over it and reread all the things. Now, you can certainly do that for the last few actions in Hearthstone by default, but this is from the beginning of the game. And there's a lot more statistics getting held here. So, lots of things here. It does take a little bit of setup. So let's go ahead and concede. The victory. And show you the original setup. By the way, I made it to level rank uh, 60. So, you have the program. And this is how it is by default. And it wants us to start on. The when you first click import from games constructed beta, it is going to not do what it just did. Instead, what it's going to do is um, run you through its very first little setup. Let's see. And here it is. Set up constructed importing if you need to go in the menu. It says step one, go to the main menu. Well, we're at the main menu, so click continue. Step two, open my collection and click click each, each class icon uh, at the top once. So you click here and you go this, 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 this. You don't click this last one because those are the neutral cards. And then I go back and I click this and that worked for me. Maybe it won't work for you. And so then I go back to the menu. You don't click forward on the page. You don't do anything else. Just do that. And let's see. And after you do that, where's the rest of the instructions? Hmm. Well, after you do it, it shows one more continue, I thought, but maybe it doesn't. Anywho, uh, that's the initial setup. You only have to do that once. It's somehow looking through the log file and seeing the cards you have. The next thing you want to do is import a deck. So you pick a deck, let's say the mage deck. You click on it. Make some changes, whatever you want to do here, and then click done, and then go back to the main menu. Uh, why? Who knows? And the first time when I had to do it, I clicked new, mage deck, and then click constructed, and it gets all of that. It gets to this point, and then I click import, and import from game constructed. Now, notice here, this says 38 of 30. We know my mage deck only has 30 cards in it. That's all that's allowed. There are definitely cards here that only have one copy, and that is the reason why there are more on this program than there are on the rest of it. Because it automatically assumes that you have the maximum amount of cards. So I only have one flame cannon, I only have one unstable portal. I only have one owl. That leaves five more. I only have one of this card. I only have one of this card. So you have to come back here and do this. Now it is supposed to kind of track your changes after the original time. So hopefully you wouldn't end up doing this a lot. But there's no guaranteeing it. Let's see, Org, Meg, Defender of Argus, let's see, Arc Mage, <coughs> and I only have one Dragon's Blast. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, this is the third time I've tried to record this and it keeps crashing on me, and I'll show you the reason why later. So click save, type in the name, and then hit OK. And you would do that for every single deck. Have all your decks. 
You could even have arena decks, although I wouldn't really bother with the arena decks. Uh, for my own I uh, thought, it seems like a lot of work for that. And when you go back to your mage and play a game, we, we will now see the overlay the proper way. And that's all you need to do if you just want to be a regular Hearthstone player and use this part. However, if you want to be a YouTuber and record, there is a lot, a little bit more work, so stay for that. If you Jane want. versus Gul'dan! Your soul so shall you have your full deck here now. You asked for it. You're seeing it, every single card in your deck. And whatever you draw this time are going to be um, grayed out as there's no longer any more. So I took the Dragon's Breath here. There's only one Dragon's Breath in my deck. And I have it in my hand as soon as the opponent chooses. He's right now, it defaults to four keeps. If he trades any, they will say M for mulligans. Uh, and then the C here is Job the coin. Done. So, takes a little understanding. Every card you do is right there. So that's my default way. That's what I'm going to start using in my... Uh, well, this part here is what I'm going to be using in my... But to do the recordings takes a little bit more work. Uh, OBS, which I hope this is the right one, does not by default have any way to really record that overlay. What I have to do is get the Hearthstone Deck Tracker to make a second window here, which has the same information, and then add a new in OBS Open Broadcast Server, new window capture, which is right here, and it is on top, and it is set to capture the mouse, it is capturing layered windows, and it's in compatibility mode. I have it set to a sub-region, at starting at 40, going to uh, this address, this of 283 by 978, and I just uh, worked my way into that. And what that does is it doesn't get this whole window, because this uh, player window with the X to maximize and all of that. I maximized it on the right side, but it is positioned in OBS to be on the left, on the right side, even though it's on the left. And then I'm using chroma key, so I clicked select, I click this, and then chroma key, and it takes out all of the gray here and uh, makes that clear so we can see the program behind it and it puts just that part right here on the right I to position it I put it on the I said move to the right edge and then I said center horizontally uh, which and that's all it took and then it is on top of the game capture of Hearthstone here which just captures Hearthstone and then on top of that it has a uh, image capture of my background image in case Hearthstone ever crashes and when we preview the stream this is what it looks like I would highly recommend you put the uh, the window on the right side because it didn't get a thin black line in the chroma key. When I click here and turn it off, it goes away. It's just an overlay. If I turn off Hearthstone, Hearthstone goes away. So, it's each one of these is layers. It works pretty good. Let's show you how to do it that way. Lots of people online were not able to get this to work. It, definitely try. To get it to work, you have to go in the options, and I've got to find where this option is, because I don't remember. Let's see. Deck windows. Here you go. Alright. 
on deck windows you have to click player and that makes a window instead of an overlay in general it's just the overlay uh, but if you're recording you need to make a separate window um, also you need to make sure that hide if hearthstone in the background is not uh, clicked if it's clicked you're gonna run into trouble and so that's what it takes to uh, re to record in open broadcast so software you'll definitely want to play with this program I'm gonna play with it some more it's got some replay ability so we can look at like the last game and see all the actions that were taken in turn one uh, here's all the things that happened in turn zero and here's all the things that happened in turn one so you can just watch and really study your th things um, it's got it works with this website called hearth stats which I don't know anything about but is an interesting prospect it does all kinds of statistics uh, that would be really helpful and you can import and export and do all that. Let's see what the tracker button does. Auto deck selection, use no deck. Anyways, so I've got a lot, lot more to learn. Uh, one thing I do want to point out as far as OBS, you might be wondering, how am I recording myself and showing you OBS and changing the settings and all that? Well, I actually have two versions of OBS running, and to do a PC tutorial, I'm just doing a monitor capture, and you can see all these properties. It just captures monitor one, and to run two versions of OBS at the same time is a simple thing of uh, adding dash multi to the end of the shortcut, and it is imperative however I do not click on this first version of OBS because if I click on it it will create an infinite loop and crash it absolutely if you on the preview screen here you will see my monitor and inside of that you will see my monitor seeing my monitor and in into infinity and for my video card it resets and crashes the program so you, I don't definitely want to do that uh, so that's how you run two option, two things of OBS, and that's how you install Hearthstone Deck Tracker. Uh, when you unzip Hearthstone Deck Tracker, I just put it on my desktop. It's just a zipped up folder, and then you run Hearthstone Deck Tracker here, if I didn't say that. Uh, if there was anything I forgot to say, uh, since this is about the third time I've tried to record this, uh, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching this tutorial. I don't usually do tutorials, but I may in the future if I learn something and it's helpful. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, I ask you to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, comment if you want to, and watch every second of my videos. If You can support me through two ways. One is by clicking on my name, Rido. On the right is a blue button that says support this channel. Any amount you donate will be greatly appreciated. The other way is by clicking on the Amazon.com affiliate link down below and uh, and shopping normally on Amazon.com. Anything you purchase, I get a small reward for, for your purchase and the prices don't go up for you. If you want to follow me on practically any social media or friend me on Steam or Battle.net, all that information is down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.